Hi, everybody. Hi there. Good to see everybody. You know, it is. Yeah, Look I know. At this. Yeah, I mean, I know they're, I know they're, I know they're there watching. I'm Who's not, watching? Wait. Oh, do you know who I just saw watching? Who? Who did you see? I saw Michael. Oh, what's up, Mike? Good to see you, brother. Yeah, man. And, oh, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. There's Patty. Oh, hey, Patty. Good to see oh, you. Oh, and look, and, and, and can you see Jen smiling? Oh, yes, hold on, you can. Hold on, let me look in there. Uh, okay, yeah, I can see. Yeah, and okay, yeah. then I can see Flora May going. Yeah, yep. Oh, Thank we, you, Lord God, you know, Jesus. And we haven't done that song in a while. We'll Let's have to do, do it today. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and Porter. Hey, Porter. You know Good what? to see you, man. I think he's still got on his apron from cooking. Yeah, yeah. And Harry. That's right, Harry. Harry. Harry, yeah. are you enjoying Porter's good food? Yeah, I know probably. he's a good cook. Probably. I'm just saying. Probably. And who else do we see? Wait. I think, wait a minute. We've, I, got, oh. I think our friend is there. That's right. I love you, Chris. Chris. And... Violet, Violet, so happy to see you, That's Violet. That's right, yeah. and Violet's roommate, Sandy. Yeah, hey, Sandy, good to see you. That's right. Did we miss anybody? Hi. Did we say hi to Scott? You know what? I don't think we Wait did. Wait i got to look at Wait. Is Scott somewhere. Wait, yes, he is. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Good That's to see you. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right, Scott. It's kind of hard sometimes to see through the camera. Well, it is, and then you know what? He, besides watching this, has been listening Mm -hmm. to that audio Bible. Oh, that's really good. Isn't that? Oh, and the person that's narrating it has mm -hmm. a terrific voice. One of those booming voices. Yes, exactly. In now, the beginning. Now, wait, but I didn't hear them say, let me make sure I say it right, Boker Tove. Boker Tove, what's up? Good morning. That's right. how it is. You got it. Boker that's how we say it. Boker Tove, that's, that's how right. we say it. Good yeah. morning. Yeah, that's really Boker awesome. Boker Tove. Boker Tove, everybody. That's right. With, and we're learning all kinds of cool things. Yes, we are. That's very awesome. Well, if we're saying hi to everybody, we should probably give a shout out to a few really special people. Well, yeah, that's right. Because like, you know somebody that sits over here. Yeah, Miss Jolyn and Mr. Don. Yep, what's up? Good that's to right. see you. That's and right. Miss Dot. Miss Dot and Diana, good to and see you. Miss Diana, oh, yes, Absolutely. yes, yes. Yeah. And. Their caregivers. Everybody all around. I, I know I can see some in there watching with everybody. Good That's to see right. you today. Good job, everybody. Good deal. Yeah. Everybody's been, so everybody's doing well. They really are. I'm just so proud of them. Mm -hmm. I really, really am. Yeah? So. Well, I mean, have you heard any, like, cool stories from anybody? Well, you know what? Hmm. Michael's having the same problem I am. Really? What's the, What kind of problem are you having, Mike? Well, let me tell you. He's getting spam calls. No. Yes, he so is. Who? From people wanting to sell him car insurance. Oh, are they? Hey, did, have they been trying to get in contact with you to talk about your car's extended warranty? Ex right? well, and that's what, exactly. And so he doesn't even have a car. And you know what? He and I talked about how we're having to block these yeah. people all the time. I Many people are getting so... They're Crazy bored. All you know the what? Time. They're bored. They want to talk to people, I yeah. think. It's yeah. like, okay. All and right, they've been fine. looking for that extended warranty. That's what I know. Oh my goodness. You got you gotta be kidding. Those people are gotten so creative, they're even sneaking notes in the Bibles and all kinds of stuff. Oh. They wanna get to they wanna contact me about my car's extended warranty. No. Stay out of my Bible, crazy. That's people. right. Stay out of my Bible. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. I love it. I saw one funny thing about that, like they're going to get so creative when at Halloween somebody's oh. going to bite into a piece of candy and there'll be a little note in there. We've been trying to get up with you about your car's extended warranty. I mean, it's going to get that ridiculous and dumb, right? Um, I'll tell you, it's just the craziest thing ever. Yeah, I mean, especially for like your, you know, 10-year-old kid, you know, their yeah. car... Yeah, yeah, my scooter's extended warranty. That's right, right? That's about exactly. My bike, right? You're going to get some bike insurance? We've got some, some of that oh, to sell you. So. Crazy. Yeah. But anyway, but other than that, everybody's doing terrific. Yeah. And they're hanging in there. Good. They're being, oh, if you all could do a seminar on patience. They could wow. teach the whole class. They could teach I, I'm sure. everybody. Yeah. Everybody help you do 
patience because you guys have done the best. I know. You know, sometimes I watch like, you know, occasionally you watch the news and you see crazy people doing crazy things. Right. I think they're kind of like, I think they're having a hard time with everything, but they just lose their mind to do crazy things. And it's just like, if you could take a picture of people doing crazy things because they just can't take it anymore, all the stuff, which we got to do this stuff to help each other. Right. And then take a picture of friendship class members who calmly do what they need to do, be patient so that they don't have to be a patient. That's right. You know, I wish they would do stories on the news about people like in the friendship class. I do too because you guys have been absolutely amazing. You've in, you're inspiring is what you are. Absolutely. Because you are walking the walk. That's right. You're not just talking the talk. Yeah. You're walking the walk. And it's something to tell myself when I get up. You know, if Jan can do this, That's I right. can do it. Right? Exactly. If Flora May can do it, I can do it. That's right. Right? Exactly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And they've been terrific. So proud of you. No, Absolutely. Definitely. We are proud of you. We are praying for you. And if you guys, if there's something we can do for you, you know, we'll try our best. I mean, there are rules about what we can and can't do, but we'll, we'll do our best and we'll definitely be praying for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's bring everybody a little bit of cheer. We want to sing a song together this morning. Let's do that. What do we want to sing? I wonder sing? which one we should sing. I don't know. Well, you know I want to do Go Down Moses again. Yeah, yeah, because we're doing the Moses story. we got to yeah, do that gotta one. we got to do that one. Perhaps should we say, say that one for the end? Maybe. Yeah, it would be okay. a good thing and for us. And then, yeah. because okay. you guys have been such examples mm -hmm. of staying with your families. Yeah. Like Jan and Patty and Flora May mm -hmm. have stayed together. Violet and Sandy have stayed together. Porter and Ricky and Harry have stayed together. Yeah. Uh, Michael, Scott, and Chris have stayed mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So you know what? Because you have, and you all have been so wonderful to each other, how about we sing... The more we are together. Hey, let's try it. Let's let's give it. Let's and give it I'm a go. dedicating that to all the homes okay. that have stayed together. There we go. And have been kind to one another and leading the example. That's awesome. That we all should be following. All right, all right. Well, let's sing it. We ready? Yeah. Here we go. Okay. The more we are together, 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 the more we are together, the happier we'll be. For your friends and my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we are together, the happier we'll be. Hey, can we change one of the lines? Um, sure. Um, so, so your friends are my friends. Can we do like friendship class in that somehow? Let's try that. Yes. So, so, so happier will be for friendship, friendship class. class. And and no, I will have to work on that later. It's right. not going to work. I'm not a very good. But songwriter. you know what? Yeah. That your friends. Yeah. Are my friends. And my friends and my friends, friends are, are your friends. friends. And that makes us the friendship, friendship class. class. Hey, that works. That's yeah. exactly right. So we'll do that at the end. Yeah. And yeah, okay, so let's try that. The okay. more we are together, 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 the more we are together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we are together, the friendship class will be. There we go. Awesome. All right, we made it work. Yes, we, we did. Made it work. All right, that's great. I like that. I did too, because well, they are. They're they're they're, they're, they're the best friends they're you they're could friends. ever have. Absolutely. Well, listen, we're gonna we're gonna do our story today, but let's just do a little quick recap. Okay, good. So we know where we are in the story. We've been studying the story of Moses. Moses was that little baby that was saved because you got to remember that the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had given a wicked, evil, terrible order. That all the male children, oh. if you were a boy and you were born in Egypt at that time, the order was you got to die. 
Oh my word. I know, Pharaoh is terrible. So like Moses, that. yeah, well, Moses was saved. Others were saved too. Shifra and Pua, the okay, two midwives, yeah, yeah. they refused to do it. Moses was sent down in a basket. He ended up in Pharaoh's house, oh, that's raised right. there. But guess what? Time went on. Yeah, he was raised in Pharaoh's house and given a position um, of, of honor, but he kind of had a temper. Oh. And he saw one of uh, some of the Hebrew slaves being abused. And by an Egyptian taskmaster, a slave master, who was whipping them and beating them. And so Moses went over, he killed the taskmaster, tried to hide the body, had to run for his right. life, off in the desert. Uh, he lives for, he lived like a whole lifetime, like many, wow. many years, just being a shepherd in the desert. He has a wife and kids and all this kind of stuff. And one day God speaks to him, calls him, says, I'm going to send you down to Egypt. And he's like, I don't really want to go. And he argues with God. Because remember, he has problems. He has uh, a, speech, a speech problem. That's right. That's right. right. So he, that, he, That's right. We think he's stutter. Yeah. Yes. He, he's a, he has a disability of a yeah, sort. Yeah, that's right? right. And so this man with a disability who was not a great speaker, God says, I'm going to send you. But the way I'm going to do it, finally, Moses, just to get you to do it, is I'm going to speak to you. You speak to your brother Aaron. Yeah. And then through Aaron, you know, we'll say all the things. Aaron will be the spokesperson. So they go on down. And what's the message? You know what? Let my people go so that they can go worship God in the desert. That's, what, that's, the, that's the message. Mm -hmm. Just It's not let them go permanently even. Just let him go worship the Lord God. Right. Pharaoh just hardens his heart. And then there's plague after plague after plague. And we have to remember, the plagues aren't just God's way of being mean and angry, right? Oh, that's right. That the was first, good. The, we didn't learn that yet last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. God, God's just not mean and angry. Every one of those plagues, those first nine plagues, they are a judgment on the things that the Egyptians and Pharaoh are putting their faith in. Yeah, true. Right. The gods that care for the Nile River and agriculture and all these sorts of things. God's judging that because they're putting their faith in the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Not just that they don't believe in the Lord God, but their faith in their gods, you know, led them to actually enslave other people and do terrible things. Right. Like, for example, kill all the male babies. All right? I mean, what kind of terrible God were the Egyptians worshiping or gods were they worshiping at this time that they could just get away with it? Ah, ah yeah we'll just kill some male babies and it's no problem and exactly it's like oh please yeah so and, and again putting faith in things yeah. that are not pure yeah. and full of grace exactly and and it can't bear that weight and it just collapses and so anyway so God judges those gods the, of the Egyptians and all the things associated from the Nile River. And there's this environmental thing that happens. Starts with the river and then every level of Egyptian life that, that's linked to the gods and that river and all that kind of stuff. It just starts getting judged and it's, it, it just gets more and more miserable. Finally, even the sun god gets judged. That's right. The reason is, is darkness just comes over all right. of Egypt for like a long time and people are freaked out. And that's like finally just saying like, you think your gods are powerful, Egypt, the gods that told you you'd get away with terrible things. Let me tell you a thing or two because we belong to the Lord God who is who he is, the great I am, or as we've been saying, well, his name is Yahweh in Yahweh. Hebrew. In Hebrew. Right. But as we've been saying, God's the one who's large and in charge. That's right, large. Right? That's right. Well, you would think after all these terrible things that have happened, finally somebody would get the clue. Like, uh, maybe we ought to start listening to God. Mm -hmm. Do you think they got the clue? No, they did not. You know why? Because I tell you, I have never in my life seen such stubborn, stubborn people. Yeah, mercy. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and it, I think it's a, it's a story that we even need to hear today. When you put your faith in the wrong things. That's right. The wrong people. That's right. The wrong gods like the Egyptians. And, you know, a, a god that people put a lot of faith in right now is money, money, yeah. money, money, money. Yeah, because it's all about that power. It's all about that power. Mm -hmm, money. You, I've got money, so therefore I can tell you what I say. to do. Yeah. So if you put your faith in the wrong things, 
eventually it's going to backfire on you, but all along the way, as God judges those things one after one, you're going to find that in the name of that God you were serving, whether it's money, power, or what have you, you were asked to make pretty terrible sacrifices along the way. Yeah. Just like the Egyptians killed all those male babies, if, you're, if you are worshiping the wrong things, putting your faith in the wrong things, putting your heart in the wrong things, those gods will eventually ask you to make terrible sacrifices and do terrible things. And some people do it willingly because they've been blinded. This is exactly just to make a parallel to this so that you know about it. The Apostle Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 1, that we can become so blinded in our state of sin and worship the wrong things, exchange the glory of God for a lie, and become so blinded to it that we can become utterly lost. And that's sort of where we are now with those nine plagues. Egypt's just lost. The leadership is lost. Pharaoh is lost. They're lost in their own sin, their own stubbornness, their own pride. It's it, it, as dark as it is outside in, in Egypt under the ninth plague. That's how dark it is in their hearts. And, and now that, we, yeah. that makes sense because when we have lost our way, mm -hmm. we do become blind in a, yeah. in, in, in a sense because we've lost our way and we're no longer having faith. Yeah. That God will show us the way. Exactly, and and that's where we wow. come up. So I'm trying to I'm trying to give you the big picture story, because today our reading is one of the hardest things. Mm. It's the last plague. It's the tenth plague. Okay. It's one of the hardest things to understand, and if you don't have this big picture frame, uh huh, for what we're getting ready to study, you'll get lost in that. And I'm trying to guide you through so you'll understand why this thing had to happen the way that it did okay okay i'm ready all right it's a tough story so that's uh, that's you know parental warning and advisory this is a tough story it's got trigger elements in it i just i wanted to set the stage for it okay all right all right i think i'm ready so our story for today is the last plague in god's deliverance and you can read about this and uh, in Exodus 11 and 12. Okay. And it says, God sent nine plagues on the Egyptian people to try to convince Pharaoh to let the Israelites out of slavery. Mm -hmm. Did it work? Even as terrible as those nine were. God wanted his people to be free. But even though those nine plagues were terrible, Pharaoh refused. Remember, he's blind, yeah. right? He's put his faith in the gods of Egypt who are now being judged. He's put his faith in his own power. And he doesn't want to let go of his power. So he's going to be yep. doing everything to go, no, I am the only one with power. I am. Yep. Don't take that away from me. Because he even thought of himself in the same way that God has judged the gods of the Nile River and, and the God of the sun. Yes. And this one, Pharaoh thought of him, you know, people worshipped him as a son of God. See. So he even thinks he's a God, right? That's how arrogant he's become. That's right. Arrogance, that is, oh, yeah. please. So, unfortunately, God had one more plague to send. He was sure this one would convince Pharaoh because this plague was awful. Mm. Awful. Mm. God would pass through the land of Egypt and the firstborn son of every family would die, including the oldest son of Pharaoh. Let me say that again. The last plague that's so terrible is the firstborn son in every Egyptian household, including Pharaoh's firstborn son, would die. Oh. Now, I'm going to pause it here and talk about this because, again, that's a terrible thing. It's really easy to read this story and see, well, God's getting ready to kill firstborn kids. Doesn't that make God terrible? Well, it... it it makes me get confused. If if he's a loving God, why would he do this? Now, I'm not the firstborn son, mm -hmm. but I am the firstborn. Well, I'm a firstborn son, and if I were in Pharaoh's oh, son, wow. I'd pay it. You would be gone. 
So there's a couple things to remember here, and I'm going to try to help you a little bit with this. So just remember a few things. The first is, it's just, it's a question of justice. All right? Oh, okay. And it's a hard thing. But do you remember back when Pharaoh ordered some people oh, to die? Yes, he did. What, what was the order? It the firstborn? No, it wasn't no, the wait. firstborn. It was all. Oh, that, oh, that's right. It was all of them. So Pharaoh ordered all the Hebrew children to die. Oh, that's right. When God exercises this judgment, and it's a terrible, don't get me wrong, it's a terrible, awful judgment. But when God orders this judgment, it's the firstborn. Now, if we were just doing a balancing scales, Pharaoh wanted all of them. Yeah. God orders the firstborn. I just want to suggest to you, one, this is, we got other things we're going to talk about. One way to help us get into this story is to understand that God must judge, but when God judges, he exercises some level of mercy. Okay. Pharaoh had no mercy. Pharaoh thought he was a god. Pharaoh worshipped terrible gods that required terrible things of the Egyptians. God judges those gods. God judges Pharaoh. But... And Pharaoh, in all of his arrogance, had no mercy whatsoever. Even God, in his judgment, exercises mercy. some level of mercy. Because if it was just about balancing the scales, right? Because Pharaoh took them all, the balancing of the scales would be that God would kill all the sons. Right. And God doesn't do that. Yeah. He showed mercy. So, so I just, that's so one thing. It, it really wasn't revenge. Because if it had been revenge, it would have been all one or, for one, or maybe even more. It would have been eye for eye. I tried right. for every Hebrew right. son that was taken out of here. I'm going to take one of your sons. I tried. Right. God no. doesn't do that. No, He showed mercy. He showed Good. a level of mercy, and it's not just that too. You got to remember, God sent nine warnings before that. Yeah. It's not, it's not like, you know, God just like gave one warning. I'm, you're not going to do it. I'm going to get even with you. Right. God shows a level of mercy Pharaoh never would have shown and did not show. And God even gives them nine chances to repent before this one. So, so there's, there's mercy and there's patience. We've been talking about yeah, patience. Yeah, we have. Haven't. Oh, yeah, because he said all those other nine plagues. Well, here's, here's the reason, and again, I'm, I've got some more things I want to say about okay, this. Okay, good. But these two, um, mercy and patience, mm -hmm. um, that's really important that we understand that about God. Because there's one description of God that gets repeated more than any other description of God throughout the entire Old Testament. And do you want to know where you can find that? It's, Wait, yes, I do. I go, no, I don't know where it is. But yes, I do want to. It's Exodus chapter 34. Okay. And verse uh, 6 and 7. And if you go and read the prophets and elsewhere in Scripture, this description of God gets used all the time. It's the most ex important expression of the character of God. There's even one Hebrew word that encapsulates it, and I'll give you that Hebrew word in a minute. But. Exodus 34, 6 says, The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, and that's Yahweh, Yahweh, right? Saying his name. Yahweh, Yahweh, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, patient, oh. and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. But he's going to hold the guilty accountable, and he'll visit the iniquity of the parents upon the children and the children's children until the third or fourth generation. So God has to be just. There has to be judgment, but that's at the end of the description. The beginning of the description is, is that God is merciful. God is patient God is abounding in steadfast love. Those are the most important things about God. And there's even a word in, that, in Hebrew that encapsulates all of these qualities. And that Hebrew word is, 
And I'm going to do the <laughs> You ready? Yeah. Everybody go <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's Chesed. 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 Try one more time. Chesed. 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 I'm not growling enough. You got to go Chesed. Chesed. Chesed is, I'm going to not do the growl. I'm just going okay. to say Chesed. Chesed. Chesed is this character of God, of his mercy, his steadfast love, his faithfulness, his patience. That's who God is. And even in this terrible, terrible judgment of taking the firstborn son, God is showing that character by giving them nine chances. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and, and even, wow. yes, he has to execute judgment, and he'll take the first, but it's not complete one-for-one one justice. And, you know, because sometimes, you know, I hear people say all the time, well, the God of the Old Testament or Old Testament justice is somehow eye for eye as if God just has to get even with you. No, then anybody that says that doesn't know anything about the Bible. They're just ignorant. All right? Okay, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, you, you send them to me. I'll talk with them. They're ignorant. They don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Because God shows steadfast love and faithfulness, chesed, patience. Chesed. Yes, and and some level of mercy even in his judgment. Mm -hmm. Wow. But there's an even a more important wow. there's even a more important part of the story. Now that's the judgment that's coming. Okay. And it's terrible. But God is so merciful and so gracious and so full of love and compassion and patience. He's going to send this judgment and he's also going to give people a way out. Oh, good. Now, this is the important part of the start. This is where we're eventually going to link up with Jesus. Okay, yeah. So we're talking about Moses. We're going to link up with Jesus, though. That's cool. Uh, it is very right. cool. Okay. So, this is this terrible thing that's going to come. Firstborn children in Egypt are going to die even Pharaoh. Now, the Israelites were given instructions that would protect them. But it doesn't say it's just for the Israelites. In the story, if you go and read it, anybody who will follow these instructions, wow. anybody who will listen. So imagine if you were, maybe you were an Egyptian and you had a, a, a Hebrew maid. And yes. the Hebrew, and you were kind to that maid and that maid told you something terrible is coming and this right. is what you've got to do. Right, right. If you want to avoid it, they could have done it and they could have had the same way out. All right. Isn't that interesting? Just to listen. If they so so, if you're not so full of arrogant and uh, arrogance and pride and power, and are still able to listen to the voice of God, even if it comes from a lowly slave, yeah, that's right. You're given a way out. Wow. All right. So that's. I mean, I'm telling you, this story has been given no justice because this is an awesome story, and it's told in terrible ways. And people don't get it. They don't know nothing about the Bible or Old Testament. And I'm here to tell you, we got to set the story, the record straight on this Absolutely. Thing. So, the Israelites were given instructions that would protect them from this plague. All they had to do was follow these instructions, and they would be protected. And here's God in, God's instruction. Each household was to kill a lamb, a little baby lamb, that's right. And they were to smear its blood on the doorpost of their homes. The doorpost is like when you're walking in the door of your house, those the sides and the top that are surround the door. Right. You were to put the blood on the doorposts of your house. And when God passed through the land, when the angel of death was sent to execute this terrible judgment, and they were also to stay inside that night, and there were... They were also given instructions on how they were to eat the lamb, and, and that's actually something that's called, well, it's called Passover. That's right. Because right. the angel of the Lord was passing Passover. over. That's right. All right. If they had the blood on the doorpost of the lamb, and they were, they were staying inside, and they were following the instructions, the Lord God promised that he would pass over their homes and spare their firstborn children and animals. Mm -hmm. They were given a way out. And they, God also instructed them, be ready to go. Have your sandals on, your belt strapped up, staff in your hand, eat it hurriedly. You're to eat that, that, that lamb that night. 
You're also to eat bread and bitter herbs, but the bread had no yeast in it. It's called unleavened bread. Oh, that's right. Okay. So unleavened bread, bitter herbs, and this lamb, you're supposed to eat it that night, stay indoors, blood over the doorpost. And this day would be a day for them to remember forever is Passover, as I said. And this meal is the Passover meal or the Paschal meal. All right? So the Israelites did what God said. They packed their things. They were ready to go. They killed the lambs and they smeared the blood on the doorposts of their homes. They ate the roasted lamb as they were instructed to. They even asked the Egyptians to give them gold and silver because God told them to do it. And eventually the Egyptians would do it as they're making their way out because they're just like, get out of here. Whatever it takes, get out of here. People did everything God told them to do. Now, a lot of people had nothing. They, they would take no instruction from lowly slaves. They wouldn't listen to the voice of God. They hadn't listened to the voice of God nine times before this. Why would, why would they start now? So the Lord God came, and the angel of death killed the firstborn son of every family, except the places where it was over the doorposts. Even the son of Pharaoh died. And the land of Egypt was filled with the heartbroken cries of families who had lost their sons and had been judged and had not listened to the voice of the Lord and had refused finally their arrogance and their power and all the things they had been worshiping. It caught up with them and the price was steep. And so Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron during the night and he said, get out got to go leave Egypt, you and all your people. And again, as they're making their way out, they take the gold and all the kind of stuff as they're going just to get them out. The people of Egypt begged them to leave. So Moses led thousands and thousands of Israelites out of Egypt to the land of Canaan, towards the land of Canaan. we got another story here, which God had promised to them. Now, again, terrible thing. I told you there's several other things we got to take out of this. One, remember Terrible story, but God's justice has mercy in it. Right. God gives plenty of warning. Right. And God gave them a way out through the Passover lamb. Now this meal, Passover meal, you know, Jesus would celebrate this with his disciples before he went where? To the cross. Oh, that's right. Was that the Last Supper? You're kidding me. Is that what they yes. ate at the yes. Last Supper? Yes. yes. You are kidding so, me. So Jesus told them to go and prepare the Passover meal because he's killed at the time of Passover. Right. Oh, wow. So now here's the cool thing about the, the way out. So they, he has this last meal with them because John uh, and all the, the gospel writers, but John especially, presents Jesus as the Passover lamb. So God made a way out, and guess what? If we were left to just our sin and just our, you know our arrogance and pride and the darkness of our heart, we'd have zero hope because we would be blind by it, just like Pharaoh. Oh, wow. But God gives a way out. He sent his son into the world. To teach us, to show us, to love us, but also to do what? To give his life, just like that lamb gave its life and its oh, life that's blood. that's right. To cover over the doorposts of our heart to so that death and God's judgment would pass over us. We have been sealed by Jesus Christ, the great Passover lamb, and given a way out from the powers of sin and death, given a way out of that, and given a way into new life and resurrection hope. God always gives a way out. And shows mercy. You see how cool the story is now? I can hardly breathe right now, and it has nothing to do with the mask. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. The connection. Yes. John to the, Jesus. Yeah, John the Baptist and... Uh, John chapter 1, right after it talks about 
Jesus, the pre-existent Word, and the you know, Word was with God, the Word was God, and all. We've, uh, he uh, tabernacled with us. We've seen uh, the glory of the Father's only begotten Son, all these things. John the Baptist is preaching there at the banks of the Jordan, and he sees Jesus, and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. There it is, the Lamb of God. And what do you and think it, that it, means? It's It goes back to this. Did you all know that? Well, of course you did. Mm. Did I know that? Hey, that's why we read the Bible there and we learn is. these things. And, you know, remember those Christmas ornaments that we do? And one of them is a lamb? Did you? And now? Yeah. There now we we'll know. There we go. You know what? We might have to put, we, Patty, we might need to have you make another ornament with, that's got a picture of Moses, just saying. <laughs> and put that on our Christmas yeah, tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moshe, Patty, I want you to yeah. make a, uh, do an ornament showing Moses. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How about that? So that's, that's how God, awesome God is. God always makes a way in Jesus Christ is our way uh, and, and we must follow him we must cling to him and he will become for us and has become for us already that way out that God provides every single time because God is merciful God is gracious God abounds and instead of his love he has that what's that word chesed he has, he has that chesed about chesed. him yeah and it will always 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 make a way and here's the there's even other cool connections if you really get into the into the awesome parts of the Bible, like later, one of my favorite little chapters of the, of the prophet Isaiah is that uh, it talks, you know, look, God judges Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. And there are other empires that God will judge, like Assyria and Babylon and Persia and Greece and Rome. I mean, the judgments will come on every time people get filled with arrogance and power. But God doesn't even forget them ultimately. In Isaiah 19, it talks about a day that's coming after the day of the Lord, when God establishes his perfect mercy and justice and righteousness, after that called one, that, uh, that, that uh, branch from the, the root of, of Jesse comes, when God establishes his perfect mercy and peace, and we say when Jesus comes, because right, right. we see Jesus as a fulfillment of that. If you read for yourself in Isaiah 19, this this one, this Messiah, this this uh, this one that brings God's kingdom and God's perfect justice and rule, the day is coming when when that will even take root in Egypt, in Assyria, and there will be an altar of the Lord in Egypt, and Egypt will be called my son and Assyria, my people. And that's exactly what we see in the church, if you think about it. Now, these terrible Egyptians who had done these things, that had been enemies of the people of God, when the Lord Jesus Christ came, because he gave us a way, guess what? The word of the Lord moved out into the, all the earth and the world. Egypt even became one of the great centers of the Christian faith within like a hundred years of the coming of Jesus Christ. And they're in the heart of Egypt. In the, you know, though it took like 2,000 years, the day eventually came when even Egypt was included in the mercy and the grace and the forgiveness of God. Yeah. Now that's pure love. Yeah. I mean, you know, we throw that around. God is love and all yeah. that. But you know what? That is pure, pure love that we have never yeah. experienced yeah. with with other human beings. Yeah. God loves us. Oh my yeah. word! That's like one of, why one of my songs. If you're if you're in church, um, and we sing like the hymns. Yes. There's one of my favorite songs is "What Wondrous Love Is This?" And it's, yes. Oh, what wondrous love is this? Oh my soul, oh, my soul. What wondrous love is this, oh my soul. And like this, and it talks about the sacrifice and the love of Jesus Christ that saves us and pulls us from the abyss of sin. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's the gospel. We had no hope, 
but God made a way and gave us Jesus Christ, and now we have hope and life. That's the gospel. Yeah. Well, listen, let's sing our song. We've got Go right, Down Moses. We've got Go Down Moses, and you know what? I'm serious, Patty. I want you to make that ornament for our Christmas tree. All right, there we go. So, um, and we'll sing, we'll sing the main one, and then we'll go. Um, uh, no, we'll do one and two, like the main and then two. Okay. Okay. All good. Right, ready? Good. All okay. Right. When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard they could not stand. Let my people go, go down, go down, Moses, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. Tell old, tell old, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let my people go. Thus said the Lord, old Moses said, let my people go. If not, I smite your firstborn dead. Let my people go, go down, go down, Moses, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. Tell old, tell old, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let, let my people go. That's a lot of fun. And we'll sing maybe some other verses too. I like it as it goes, exactly. And we have one more song. We yes, gotta, we are. We gotta get this out there for Flora May. That's right. All right. All right. Here we go. You ready? Here we go. I'm gonna get my posture here. I know because we connected. Did you hear that? Connected Moses to Jesus. Yes, absolutely. Here we go. That's good. All right. Here we so, go. Thank, thank you, Lord God, Jesus. 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 All right, let's say a word of prayer, okay? Let's do it. Lord God, I want to give you thanks for every single one of our members of Friendship Class. Be with them, bless them, be with the caretakers, all of our friends. Help us be... Lord, a patient people, merciful and gracious as you have been gracious towards us. And help us listen to your voice and protect us and keep us all our days. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Till this time next week. We'll you see you later. It. All right. Bye. Bye now. Love you guys.